Good evening from Armenia Media. In recent weeks, we've all seen gruesome footage of Azeri soldiers committing and then boasting about their war crimes against Armenian servicemen. Unfortunately, this is not a new phenomenon. Increasingly, since the 2020 Artsakh war, Azeris have captured, tortured, and murdered Armenian soldiers as well as civilians alike. Their crimes have been reminiscent of the barbarism our ancestors experienced during the 1915 Armenian genocide. Today, however, these Armenian victims of Azeri aggression have a staunch advocate in Siranush Sahagyan. Siranush is an international human rights lawyer and chief counsel for Armenian victims of Azeri war crimes at international courts. She joins us today from Yerevan. Siranush, welcome to the program. Thank you for hosting. Um, Siranush, I understand you have some 350 cases that you're actively prosecuting, including cases on behalf of prisoners of war and their families, as well as victims of war crimes. Can you give us a brief overview? Yes, so uh, we have uh, exactly 350 cases, uh, not only from 2020 war, uh, but also from 2016 war. Uh, and moreover, during so-called peacetime, there were many incidents of torturing, killing of Armenian villagers who lost their way and ended in Azerbaijani territory, or they were abducted from their uh, neighborhood uh, forests. Uh, they were taken into Baku, uh, and again, uh, we documented uh, very grave human rights violations. Uh, so all incidents were documented, and uh, we prepared well-sounded uh, cases. And we took those cases before the European Court of Human Rights, uh, mm -hmm. which is the main um, regional court dealing with state responsibility for human rights violations. Uh, actually, uh, 2020 was continuation of the discriminatory mm -hmm. policy uh, by Azeris against Armenia. Um, we uh, faced many grave human rights violations back in 2016 during four days war. Uh, again, uh, we had decapitation cases. Uh, we had uh, extrajudicial killings uh, of civilians and the physical control of Azerbaijani uh, troops. Uh, and uh, in the same logic, we have tortures, enforced disappearance, uh, shelling, um, uh, extrajudicial killings, arbitrary detention of uh, Armenian victims. Uh, so those um, 350 cases deal with serious human rights violations, which reveal also war crime. So we don't count in this number other milder types of human rights violations like mm. right to property, uh, 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 freedom of expression, uh, violating their uh, private life because of inability to enter to their settlements, to visit to cemeteries of their family members and so on. Of course, we have other types of human rights violations, but uh, now uh, we focus uh, and we document uh, only those uh, human rights and humanitarian law uh, violations, which reveal also war crimes. Hmm. Okay. Um, earlier in the week, we saw the repatriation of 17 prisoners of war to Armenia. How many in your estimate, or do you think still remain in captivity in Azerbaijan? And what are the processes um, to your knowledge um, that are being undertaken to secure their release? And where does your work fit in this regard? 
So uh, we uh, have captives uh, from 2020 war and uh, aftermath uh, developments. Uh, officially 33 uh, captives from 2020 war still remain in uh, Baku uh, and they become a part of uh, judicial proceedings, uh, which are very politicized and they use these uh, judicial sham trials uh, as bargaining chip uh, to have concessions from Armenian side on political matters. Um, but um, uh, this uh, last group was from uh, the 13th of September attack. So all 17 captives uh, were uh, taken in the sovereign territory of Armenia. Uh, but we are now talking about the official acknowledged numbers. But uh, we have uh, evidence supporting that this number uh, does not reflect the real numbers of captivity. Uh, actually, uh, more than 80 uh, Armenian captives uh, were in Baku alive, but Azerbaijan refuses to take accountability for their fates. And from legal perspective, now they are considered as enforced disappeared uh, persons uh, and international humanitarian law also prohibits uh, enforced disappearance of soldiers, civilians, uh, and uh, those acts also amount to war crimes. So at least 80 Armenian captives, including civilian captives uh, are now uh, enforced disappeared people. Are these also at the 80 in your in your 350 cases that you're um, representing? Exactly. So we are representing uh, enforced disappeared people as well. Uh, and um, uh, concerning uh, the, the procedure, how uh, repatriation is done. Uh, uh, so uh, first uh, we pursue legal uh, proceedings uh, and we request it in terms measures in order to protect life, physical integrity of Armenian captives. They are under imminent risk of harm to their life security uh, and international courts granted uh, our request and uh, they are now under strength uh, protection, the ones who are acknowledged. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, during these court proceedings, we raise uh, human rights violations, but also uh, like blatant uh, denial of uh, right to fair trial, which means internationally, we cannot recognize the outcome of uh, trials. Uh, those 33 who are kept uh, uh, do not have any solid legal ground to be deprived of their liberty. Uh, and our uh, final request from the court is to order release of Armenian POWs. Uh, so this is a reserve um, um, uh, tactics uh, because we cannot, as human rights lawyers, we cannot rely on political results. But in order to ensure very immediate uh, reaction uh, and resolution of the humanitarian issue, uh, of course, uh, we need to follow political uh, processes uh, and the repatriation of Ar Armenian uh, POWs was a part of the November 9 trilateral statement uh, and follow up political processes. But again, uh, Azerbaijan did not uh, keep the spirit of international law, uh, <laughs> failed to discharge its humanitarian obligation to release Armenian POWs on the principle all for all. Uh, and they keep Armenian ho uh, POWs as hostages to pressure on international community, to pressure on Armenian government, to have uh, pro-Azerbaijani political uh, solutions. And each time we see uh, satisfaction of political demands uh, before uh, receiving Armenian POWs. For example, uh, Azerbaijani side requested, demanded, and received uh, maps of um, mine lands 
uh, and then they repatriated Armenian POWs. In the beginning of September, uh, Armenia um, uh, handed to Azerbaijan uh, several settlements and displaced many Armenians from Berzor, um, Aravnoi, and uh, uh, other. Uh, settlements in vicinity and in result uh, uh, of this negative development, uh, again, they uh, repatriated a certain amount of Armenian POWs. Um, uh, influential uh, states and uh, international uh, organizations, uh, they have a mediating role. And in this capacity, they also negotiate uh, the return of uh, Armenian POWs. Um, you can see that in a recent week, uh, there is an anti-Russian mood in Armenian uh, society. Uh, and against this uh, background, uh, Armenian government very closely works with uh, US and Western countries uh, for peaceful uh, negotiation processes and uh, under the authority mediation of US part, uh, there was a possibility to issue return of 17 um, uh, Armenian POWs. Uh, we have seen uh, other uh, political uh, developments, uh, for example, Hungary, uh, which is uh, far from being um, a, a very friendly state to Armenia because of transfer of uh, Ramil Safarov to Azerbaijan uh, to enjoy impunity, uh, also had a role in repatriation of Armenian POWs. So Azerbaijan increased the reputation of Hungary and uh, with their help, uh, they repatriated 10 uh, prisoners of war. So I would say uh, at this stage, uh, uh, POWs are uh, being repatriated uh, either against um, concessions by uh, Armenian government or with the mediation of uh, international uh, actors. Mm. We'll come back to the role of international um, of the international community in a second, um, but going back to the eighty um, captives, you said you have evidence of, but Azerbaijan refuses to acknowledge them. Now, this is an important part of your work to gather and verify evidence to support your cases, um, at, you know, at the courts. In the age of social media, where so much of this information is being shared publicly, you know, the crimes that they do them, they film them, they put them online. Um, does this make your work any easier or is it even more difficult? Uh, it definitely makes our work uh, easier. Uh, because video or photo materials are strong evidence to prove uh, captivity. They are not the sole evidence uh, for human rights lawyers, and uh, we are able to, to collect other type of evidence as well. Uh, for example, witness testimonies by eyewitnesses. Um, in this te technology uh, area, we can uh, track the phone, uh, we can have uh, messaging uh, as a proof of uh, captivity, uh, we can monitor their social media uh, to understand whether uh, an account, the account of a captive uh, was accessed or not, from which destination, and so on. Uh, but uh, video and uh, photo materials are strong uh, evidence and they support our action. But Azerbaijan also tries to create confusion. Uh, they mm -hmm. use, uh, of course, uh, videos from this war concerning Armenian captives, but also they use um, evidence, uh, video materials uh, to uh, horrify Armenian uh, society, but uh, which happened in other parts of the world, mainly in Turkey against Kurdish uh, population. Uh, and uh, with these uh, tactics, uh, they want um, 
uh, uh, to create uh, confusion. And if by mistake we use wrong evidence, wrong video material uh, without uh, proper verification, then uh, they will raise issues, doubts about uh, credibility of video materials. And in general, the position of Azerbaijani government that those videos are not uh, verified. There is no information about the exact time uh, persons filmed in the video and so on, and they cannot be used by the courts. Uh, however, uh, we took seriously this uh, issue. We verify each and every video material we use and submit to international courts. Uh, we identify the persons, uh, Armenian persons in the video. We also collect and reveal information about Azerbaijani soldiers, uh, the perpetrators of uh, crimes. So all surrounding circumstances uh, filmed in the video are revealed and without this investigation, we don't use any single video material. Maybe in the society, uh, ordinary people uh, can be confused and uh, they use uh, different sources, but uh, when we're talking about professional work uh, in international bodies by human rights lawyers, then uh, we, uh, we treat very seriously this matter. Mm -hmm. Um, some of these cases may take years to reach a resolution. Um, you mentioned Safarov earlier, and I believe you represented that case as well, and it took about 10 years, maybe a bit less, um, for a verdict. Considering that, um, you know, this sort of the long time that it takes, what would success look like for the victims that you're representing? Mm -hmm. Indeed, these international uh, judicial proceedings uh, take a long time, and for us, it took eight years uh, to have uh, a beneficial uh, Armenian judgment, uh, but very important one because this is the first legal case when racial discrimination policy land at state level was endorsed by international court. So uh, before this judgment, we raised this issue uh, uh, based on um, uh, cases uh, which were not uh, tested by independent authority. And you know, there are two-sided accusations of racial discrimination. What is here very important that Armenian side uh, was very successful uh, in order to prove racial discrimination by Azerbaijan uh, before judicial uh, instances. But mm -hmm. Azerbaijan, uh, despite of many allegations and accusation, they haven't succeeded in, in a single case where Armenia is responsible for killing, torturing, abducting, uh, and so on of an Azeri uh, victim, which means this equality, uh, which is uh, done by international uh, community, treating this both sidedness uh, is fake and it does not reflect the justice which is brought by international uh, courts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with the help of international courts, uh, we document human rights uh, violations. Um, uh, those war crimes do not uh, accept limitation periods. So based on these judicial decisions, we can pursue prosecution of Azerbaijani perpetrators at any times, uh, and this information will not be lost. So generation by generation, we can uh, capitalize these uh, uh, judicial decisions. Then there is a possibility of uh, providing compensation uh, to the victims 
to the extent they want to, to receive uh, compensation for their moral and pecuniary damages. Uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, there is an obligation from Azerbaijani side to take individual and general measures to restore the situation before human rights violation. At least in the case of uh, Gurgen Markarian, this implies that Safarov will not enjoy impunity and he should be sent to jail mm -hmm. uh, under uh, strict supervision of uh, international organizations or in some other country where realistically he can serve uh, his punishment. And uh, Azerbaijan also has a legal obligation to take general measures to prevent uh, racial discrimination in their uh, society. And this procedure is being supervised by international organization. So Azerbaijan does not have any other choices. Either they have to punish their own perpetrator which would be a real victory also psychological, or they will face sanctions. So we will burden politically the situation of uh, the country and all these discussions, supervision will only be discontinued once the judgment is implemented. No implement implementation, always political work, always political pressure and also risks of um, uh, international uh, sanctions. Mm. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, even with some uh, delays, having uh, judgments, bringing justice uh, to the families of victims uh, are important rather than leave those incidents unnoticed internationally. Mm. Um, we, we, we just spoke about um, what uh, basically it would mean for Azerbaijan to have a guilty verdict as well. If in the lack of political will, especially with a state, a belligerent state like Azerbaijan, um, you mentioned sanctions, but sanctions even to some extent require political will on behalf of those who are imposing them. So what guarantees are there that once a guilty verdict is, um, you know, issued, um, Azerbaijan will um, enforce or that guilty verdict will be enforced in practice? Mm -hmm. uh, so in politics, there are no guarantees. Mm. Uh, but uh, we know that international community has weapons. Mm -hmm. And they were very successful in pressuring influential states like Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, if international community has a will, then Azerbaijan will show this willingness to implement uh, judgments because of the fear of international community. So far, we have seen just condemnations soft mm. condemnations, but they were not combined with practical measures we're seeing in other parts of uh, uh, region. Uh, for example, um, uh, we saw very uh, strict measures, including against private companies in Belarus, where just the right to uh, freedom of assembly, uh, was at stake. So illegim illegitimate restriction on uh, the right of a protester uh, was uh, enough ground uh, to sanction the country, even close private uh, uh, companies like uh, their uh, official uh, airplane to, to terminate flights internationally and so on. But we are not uh, seeing, witnessing uh, sanctions uh, against Azerbaijan. 
just uh, condemnation. But um, uh, why I believe that the international community has uh, weapons, the last uh, example of repatriation is the obvious example. It took just several days for, for the US side to ensure repatriation of 70 Armenian POWs. How? Of course, they have many interests and by meeting some of the interests with soft tools, they can convince Azerbaijan to resolve purely humanitarian issue. But of course, we, we know that um, the US side can threaten with war crimes. So just uh, the, um, the potential uh, of a new bill uh, requesting uh, investigation of war crimes of uh, Aliyev regime would be suffice for Azerbaijani authorities to meet this demand and do not escalate their situation internally and externally. So um, um, uh, I think that the world uh, should just keep one line, refuse uh, from double standards uh, for the sake of their own mercantile interests uh, and just pursue uh, values uh, and bring justice uh, to victims, which is very important because um, if we, ensure impunity, the impunity will give rise to new crimes. Uh, and this time, those crimes will not be limited to a local geographical area. Uh, the, the style which we see from uh, Azerbaijan uh, is horrifying. Uh, and those people are part of Europe they travel in Europe and they will bring this culture to the lives of Europeans. So we need uh, to be very consistent uh, on these crimes and do not uh, give a possibility to leave such horrific crimes unpunished. Um, you mentioned that there's been, so far there's been only soft condemnation and that's really been just in the past week with the release of that uh, particular video of Azeris rounding up Armenian soldiers and shooting them point blank. Do you think it's too little too late or are you already seeing some traction in your day-to-day -day work and your ability to represent these cases? Is there um, more positive reception? I would say yes, uh, and um, uh, all uh, partnering organizations and states, they were very careful to the facts that we were bringing, uh, and they were interested uh, yeah. in the facts, uh, human rights violations and war crimes were raising. Uh, so I believe uh, they have uh, a big base of war crimes committed by Azerbaijan. Um, and uh, I also believe, uh, depending on certain political developments, uh, they will be open in using this data. Uh, but uh, again, um, in my opinion, there are no permanent interests in the politics as well. So at mm -hmm. some point, we will face a confrontation between yeah. Azerbaijani interests and the interests of the international community. I think this would be the critical point when the justice, the justice will be uh, administered. But I think um, those international organizations might risk also reputational harm mm. uh, if they fail to implement uh, sanctions. Uh, the uh, cases are very strong. And even within this Russian-Ukrainian conflict, uh, uh, they were not been able 
to document such horrific uh, war crimes that were committed by Azeris in Artsakh. For example, this group uh, execution was not the first one. We have reported other group uh, executions. Uh, and what is uh, interesting, like, in, maybe uh, within Ukrainian conflict, both sides uh, commit crimes, but they do their best to hide the crimes. Uh, in case of Azeris, they film and they demonstratively commit those crimes, which is also a signal, which is a messaging to the international community as well. So this cynical attitude is not just against Armenian population, but it is against uh, the international community. So we have such qualities of crime, which are uh, unprecedented, and they are not seen in other parts uh, of the world. And we have like methods, decapitation, and again, uh, we see a radical increase of number. For example, if the first case with Gurgen Markarian happened just in uh, in the beginning of 20s, uh, during the war 2016, we have uh, three cases of decapitation, but all victims were soldiers. From this war, we have 30 decapitation cases. Uh, uh, 10 times more than just four years uh, before. And this time majority of the victims were uh, civilians, vulnerable civilians who just uh, remained in their settlements uh, and were not been able to escape because of age or other physical uh, limitation. So these statistics is very important and uh, the colors of war crimes that we've seen in Artsakh uh, are incomparable to uh, other regions where also war crimes are happening. And uh, by not responding uh, to such well-established uh, cases, well-documented with video materials, uh, those organizations and uh, states uh, will cause reputational mm -hmm. harm and uh, will um, raise this big rhetorical question whether there is meaningful uh, to be in one group of alias with these uh, states with whom we are devoted based on values, human rights, but they are not supportive, supportive to our democracy, to their own declared uh, values. Uh, and this will uh, be the beginning of collapse uh, of inter integration uh, processes internationally as well. Mm. Um, considering this perhaps um, increased interest, um, um, or acceptance um, in, by the international community, at the same time considering the number of crimes, um, the, the nature of the crimes, the documentation, as you said, as the Azerbaijani signal, not just to Armenians, but to the international community in terms of their sense of impunity and ability to, meet, uh, to commit these crimes, um, everything we just discussed. Do you think this might have an impact in terms of um, reaching perhaps a resolution in a more speedy manner than the case that we previously discussed with Safarov? Or do you think it's just um, the legal process will just take however long it takes? Uh, no, I think uh, if courts feel supportive mm. uh, through supported by uh, international uh, condemnations by uh, like political bodies, <clears throat> purely like uh, single states and so on, uh, their uh, responsibility level uh, is raised and mm. they demonstrate more interest in speedy consideration, uh, speedy judgments uh, and uh, impact of the judgments on uh, solution. Uh, so they become a part of big picture, one puzzle 
supporting the common end. So the readiness of courts to be speedy and ensure a judgment as a part of big important processes uh, is higher when we have, um, we have international support. Mm. So uh, we believe uh, if uh, European Union, uh, US, uh, uh, other uh, states like France, um, uh, they, uh, uh, they show will uh, mm. to protect the sovereignty of um, uh, Armenia and prevent uh, more crimes against uh, Armenians. Uh, will give a realistic chance for us uh, to have uh, to have justice. Um, my final question um, to you today, Siran, which is your work is um, supported by the Washington-based Armenian Legal Center. Um, you were recently in Washington. Um, you just made reference um, to you know, uh, America threatening Azerbaijan with war crimes. And I believe Representative um, Jackie Speer was part of the delegation who visited um, Armenia um, in um, September, um, has already made an announcement that she's preparing a resolution um, on war crimes. Um, what information can you share? Um, how did your meetings in Washington go? Was there, um, you know, I, I, and I, I realize that things are moving very quickly and you know, um, um, there have been statements since you returned, um, but um, how was, um, you know, when you were making the case for these victims in Washington, how was that received? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, because we have a big database of cases, so we are the organization, uh, fully equipped uh, to provide comprehensive uh, information and uh, evidence. Uh, and uh, our uh, mission was uh, to meet uh, and share uh, uh, information about the war crimes, uh, but not just the allegation, but also proof uh, mm -hmm. confirming uh, those uh, war crimes, uh, which are worth to, to uh, investigation. Uh, and of course, uh, we offered uh, our further uh, assistance to, to provide uh, more uh, information as needed uh, based on the numbers which we provided. For example, when we say we have 30 cases of decapitation, this mm -hmm. means we have also proof uh, the dead bodies, photos, uh, also of uh, autopsy reports confirming the, the cause of that. So we have uh, testimonies from uh, villagers and so on. So we have very uh, solid evidentiary basis. Uh, and uh, uh, we just uh, presented this uh, evidence uh, to different stakeholders and uh, try to highlight the importance um, um, uh, political and legal considerations uh, which requires intervention by the US side as well. So um, uh, the, in one word that would be yeah ad advocacy, advocacy mm -hmm. for more action, uh, uh, this Magnitsky uh, regime is very uh, important uh, and the grounds for this regime are uh, human rights violations, war crimes, but also corruption. Uh, and we know that uh, Azerbaijan is involved uh, in uh, war crimes, uh, also corruption. Uh, there are uh, international uh, media uh, coverages uh, also revealing uh, the uh, corrupt conduct of uh, Azerbaijani authorities. So uh, they have at least two legitimate uh, ground to intervene and sanction this uh, criminal regime. Yeah. Well, let's hope that the cases of these victims will play a role in the political considerations that come in, in, in the coming days uh, from the international community. I'm sure the work that you do, Sirano, will play an important role in that regard. Um, thank you so much for all the work that you do. Thank you for joining us today. More power to you.
Thank you.